Hey everybody, I'm Ken and welcome back to another episode of The Lazy Gourmet. Today I'm going to show you an absolutely fantastic way to do a stuffed beef roast. In this case, I'm using an eye of round. Mm, the start of the show right here. Gorgeous piece of meat. And I'm going to show you how to butterfly it, stuff it, and roast it for an absolutely incredibly delicious, unbelievably easy way and a different take on making a roast. So to start us off, I'm gonna use and make something that's very, very easy in terms of stuffings. And the stuffing or the filling that I'm gonna use involves one onion, a couple of sweet peppers, garlic, rosemary, thyme. The rosemary and thyme are fresh. They're absolutely delicious. They're right from my garden. And a little bit of garlic. That's it. We're gonna throw them in our food processor saute them off and we're off to the races so before we do any of this just to keep things kind of going and kind of multitasking first things first preheat your oven to 400 degrees fahrenheit or 200 degrees celsius it'll make things a lot easier you're not waiting for the oven to preheat and it's all ready to go so in here in my i love my food processor i mean seriously we have like an emotional attachment what I'm going to do is take an onion and I'm basically just going to quarter it up, throw it in, nothing complicated. Same thing with my peppers. My peppers I'm just going to slice up and just remove the pits and just break them up. Very, very easy. Nothing to this at all. And again, what you're going to do is just remove the inner membrane and the seeds and that goes in there as well. You're going to use about a tablespoon of salt. I know it's a little heavy, but the recipe needs it and you're working with beef. The next thing to go in now is about four tablespoons of minced garlic. You can use four cloves or four tablespoons. Whichever you prefer is totally fine. The next part of this is, again, something that's very easy. You can use dry, it's totally fine. In this case, because it's a season and I got this from my garden, I'm just gonna take a few leaves of my rosemary, fresh, maybe two or three, maybe four sprigs, and throw those in my food processor as well. And this will give it a totally, such a beautiful aromatic flavor. I love it, I absolutely love it, and rosemary, time they go perfectly with just about anything next thing is some time because it's going in the food processor I'm just gonna break it up and very coarsely or roughly whatever you want to call this just throw a few sprigs in there and thyme and like rosemary a little goes a long way so you're going to really feel the background punch of this as the meat is roasting all right so now that we have our thyme already added finished that i'm just going to put this back i'm going to use it for garnish after anyway next part of this is a little fresh cracked black pepper and in this, I don't really, there's no real measurement. I'm not going to tell you how much to use. Do it to your liking. I like, I like the peppery taste, so whatever works for you. And of course, a little bit of Greek extra virgin olive oil. In this case, I'm going to put in maybe four tablespoons of the Greek extra virgin olive oil. And what you're going to do is very simply just Rise it up. All right. This is done perfectly. It's actually the consistency of a paste now. I love this. I'm like super stoked. Next thing, get this going to a medium high heat because what we're going to do is we're going to take everything from here and just really quickly saute it down so it the flavors begin to really develop and really come out. And again, a little bit of Greek extra virgin olive oil, not much, just enough to get things moving. And you're gonna take this, our stuffing, and just put it in there. 
Once it goes in the pan, it's gonna bring it up. You're gonna go to like a medium high heat and just let it simmer off for just a few minutes. Ta-da! And here I am back with the magic of editing. I have my red acrylic cutting board and I use this for meats and different other raw kind of ingredients that have a bacteria to them. So in this case, I'm gonna place it right on my wooden cutting board and I'm gonna take our eye of round piece of beef. It's a beautiful piece of meat. It's about three pounds, give or take, and it's actually perfect for this. And the next part of this, you're gonna do while this is kind of sauteing down or simmering down, and I'm just gonna get a little spatula and give that a quick stir. And as this tightens down, you're gonna see it kind of thicken up as well. So I just gave this a quick stir. As it's uh, simmering down, it's gonna tighten up as well, which is exactly what we want. Now, to butterfly this is very easy and a technique that kind of I taught myself. Whatever the thickness of the meat you wanna ultimately roll up is what you're gonna use to go straight down. So you're gonna make one cut straight down, just like this. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but this is about half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Now, what you're gonna do then is take your roast and slowly start slicing it along that same seam. And what you're doing now is actually creating an opening for this. The trick to this as well is it has to be absolutely for sure your knife needs to be dead on ball sharp like you cannot be messing around with a dull knife or you're going to be in for a world of grief so i just continue to butterfly this out and see how my meat is kind of opening up now it's becoming a flatter piece of meat and that's exactly what we want Now, you don't want to be losing a finger, so I would recommend you be extremely careful with this. And just keep it open. Keep opening it up, just like that, until it becomes just about flat. And that's, that's it right here. It's like perfect, just like that. And make a few other slits. And there you have it. How easy was that? So now our meat is flattened out, it's opened and it's ready to incorporate our mixture. Oh my God, if you guys can just smell this, this is so fantastic. All the flavors are coming out. The olive oil, the garlic, the rosemary, the onion, the thyme, and it doesn't need much. You really don't need much to this at all. Just a few minutes, just enough to bring everything out, kind of let all the liquids or the natural juices of the veggies and the herbs come out, the oils, and you're gonna be perfect. One thing though I will caution you on as we get closer to putting this together, make sure that this is, when you handle this and you put this in your meat, that you don't come into direct contact with it because I'm telling you, you're gonna be looking for new fingerprints. It's that hot. So this is just about ready now. So I'm just gonna turn this off and Take this mixture of ours, the sauce mixture, and just place it over our meat. There's just something about this that just makes me crazy. This is like insanely good. Just gonna throw that over there. And again, keeping in mind that this is extremely hot, just spread it around your meat evenly, as evenly as you can. Now this is really, really hot. And the next part of this is, I'll just turn it this way and I'll show you how it's gonna get rolled. What we're gonna do is just very simply take this and roll it. And keep rolling it. The trick to this, without actually getting to the point where you need to tie it with string and becoming like this huge, messy kind of production 
roast this off with the cut seam side down. That's the trick. And if you have a little bit of fat on this, make sure that the fat part is on top. So as it cooks, it renders down and actually flavors the rest of this uh, roast as well. So now what I'm going to do, the next part is I'm just going to grab some parchment paper here. And believe me, this step is actually pretty important. And I'm going to line my pan, my roasting sheet, with the parchment paper. And the reason I do this is it just makes cleanup a lot easier. So I'm just going to take my pan here, line this up over here. And it may be out of your camera's way, but you'll see it in a little bit when I bring it front and center. I'm going to very carefully and quickly move our roast just like that. And I'll take this, bring it over here like that. So then we have our meat and place this, whatever's left over or whatever came out, over your roast. See where I'm going with this? This is going to be absolutely fantastic. Just spread it all over. And this is all flavor. This is all totally flavor. Throw that in there. Let me wash this off real quick and it's in my nature what can i tell you drizzle a little bit of olive oil over this a little bit more fresh cracked black pepper pepper you can't go wrong with pepper especially when it comes to like beef no way all right do that and our oven's preheated to 400 so that's ready to go take a few of these thyme sprigs, place them over, get rid of that, and then take another rosemary sprig, put that over this as well, just like that. Remember, this is all flavor, people. So, this is ready to go into an oven. It's preheated. I know I said that a million times, but the trick to beef as well, or cooking this kind of meat, is 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius and you're looking at around 20 minutes per pound or half a kilo give or take so in this case it's about uh, three pounds or so so you're looking roughly at around an hour to get this to like a medium a little bit medium or so uh, a little less if you want it more on the rare side but my guests that are coming over I can tell you they're not into that really rare stuff, so this will work perfectly. So, 20 minutes per pound or half kilo at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and you're gonna be golden. And when this is done, I'll show you how it turns out.